Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you to the fifth annual Raise the Roof Jazz Festival put together by Loving Home Hospice for Children. Uh, I can't tell you how important the work that goes into this foundation, into this nonprofit organization. If I could have the board members stand up just for a second or be recognized if you're sitting or standing. Uh, Lucy, Lucy Martin is here, past mayor. There she is, she's walking, so she's standing already. Also, on the board, Vince Hill, I don't know if he's here yet, Vince Hill, Brenda Johnson, Lee, Lee Davis, and Dilette Davis, David Shapiro. And Dilette, could you stand up one more time because you put in a lot of work, you put in a lot of energy, and look at what's happening. We've got a nice crowd for you today, so appreciate everything you do, Dilette. Uh, dignitaries, that's where I was getting to. Lucy Martin, ex-mayor. Lucy's here. Lucy, wave. Thank you. Dennis Washburn, ex-mayor and city councilman. Dennis, wave. Thank you. David Shapiro, of course. David, council member. Past president of the Calabasas Chamber, uh, past CEO of the Calabasas Chamber, Bridget Carl is here. Bridget, could you stand up? So those are some of our dignitaries, and we appreciate them showing up. I wanted to read to you the mission statement of Loving Home Hospice, and I, my glasses are made for long, not short. It is our goal to enable the residents and their families to focus on the joys of the life experiences and the community of the family life to come. Life is a spiritual transition. This is the mission statement of Loving Home Hospice for Children. And tonight, or this afternoon, I'd like you to make sure that when we get around to the live auction, think for a second, your $100 could be the impetus for a bed for one of these children to get a good life towards the end of their life for the family and everybody involved with it. So make sure you open up your hearts, your minds, your wallets, and, and put forward a little something to the live auction. But before that, we have some good entertainment for you. And I've been learning about the entertainment tonight. I know about Tom Scott. I didn't know about Mike Garson. And Mike, to my astonishment, is a 40-year band member of the David Bowie family. David Bowie, we all know Bowie. Longest band member, and he's done over a thousand shows with David Bowie and other shows. He's a composer, a performer, a teacher. He's worked with Smashing Pumpkins and Nine Inch Nails. He scored uh, some of the songs on Gone Girl. And now, as he transitions, into the life that we're all transitioning in, a little bit later in life, so to speak. The effect and power of music as a composer and, and the composition of music, the healing powers of music. And that was very interesting to me. Um, Mike Garson, if you get a chance to talk with him, is a very interesting individual, and he has a wonderful story uh, and many stories about the past and about all the work he's done in music, and he was able to get through those times. If you remember correctly, we used to party a little bit, uh, you know, with David Bowie. I think you know what I'm saying. And somehow we all made it through. So I don't know, is Mike here? Where's Mike? Mike, please come on up. And like I said, when you get a chance, I want you to chat with Mike. The stories are unbelievable. Mike. Maybe you could tell just a few more stories before you get started with your part of the program. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Garson. Thank you. Well, transition scared me, but I get the idea. <laughs> anyway, um, having done many shows with David through the years and 19 albums, with him was a big loss, you know, for me and everybody else, of course, because he's sort of just an artist for our times, kind of a, a renaissance 
character guy. And uh, his acting was great. He's done great sculptures. He's a great artist. He's done some, I have a picture in my house that he did of me and painting. And he, he was even an editor um, for an art magazine. So he had many lives and a great producer and probably the ultimate casting director because all the musicians that he used over 40 or 50 years really had successful careers. Um, Luther Vandross was in my band when I was the music director for David. This was, goes back to 1974. He wasn't even known. But when I heard that voice, I thought, boy, we got a talent here. Dave Sanborn. There were so many great musicians that I got to play with. I played with 13 different bands over like 35, 40 years. And there was never a bad band, you know. And the jam sessions and the rehearsals were sometimes more fun than the concerts because we would create all sorts of uh, interesting music just because we were continuously like searching. So what I thought I would do, uh, I thought I would play a little tribute to him. Uh, this will be my 10th tribute. <laughs> I keep writing them for him. We did a show in London with Lord and, and the old Bowie band and I did something with Seal uh, on one of the Bowie tunes that I had played on called Disco King. I, Mark, if you could get ready for the, um, the video. I'll pu I, have a, I put together, a, if you go on the internet, you could find Space Oddity with just David's vocals. So I put it on the video and I'm gonna play piano to it. And there's a lot of pictures you won't recognize, but most of them are me and him. It's just that I had hair. So, and they were <laughs> different, different stages. But anytime you see someone with hair, it's probably me. But if you look real close, you'll see Bruce Springsteen, you'll see Luther Vandross, you'll see Dave Sanborn, you'll see Dave Grohl, you'll see Billy Corgan. Because uh, when he had his 50th birthday party at uh, Madison Square Garden, he brought up all these bands. So as the video passes, you'll get to, um, you'll get to see um, just, you know, my history from 1972. The last concert I did with him was his last show in America. It was an AIDS benefit uh, with Alicia Keys. We did it in New York City. He was a very humble that way, and he didn't even want that show filmed. It would have been an amazing show, and he didn't want it filmed. He sort of did things anonymously when it came to charities. So he was uh, quite a guy, actually, and very humorous. And uh, that's about all I could say for now about him. But I'm gonna play a little, compose a piece right on the spot now for him, and then at a certain point, the video You'll, we'll do Space Oddity, which was really one of his great songs.
ground control to Major Tom. Ground control to Major Tom. Take your protein pills and put your helmet on. Ten. Ground control Nine. to Major Tom. Eight. Seven. Six. Commencing Five. countdown engines Four. on. Three. Two. Check ignition and may God's love be with you. Thank you so much. Brings back a lot of memories. I saw a few other people in there. Robert Smith, did you see him from The Cure in there? And a bunch of very, very good musicians that passed through our lives. Anyway, um, David always was moving forward and he always 
made a point to keep us out of our comfort zone. So I'm following that tradition. So now we'll continue the show with a whole other series of music and intentions. There's a young girl that I've been teaching for a few years, jazz saxophone, and um, we don't speak a lot verbally, but musically we connect. And uh, she's here today, and we're gonna do a few songs together for you right now. I'd like you to welcome on alto sax, Sammy Shapiro. Thank you. 
Sounds like an older soul to me. <laughs> it's um, really fascinating how musicians develop and watching it is just the most incredible thing. One of the reasons, one of the reasons, thank you, one of the reasons that I chose uh, Nature Boy, if you go on YouTube tonight, how many have heard David Bowie's version of Nature Boy? One? Two, <laughs> three. <laughs> it's, it's, it's beyond belief. It was actually part of the uh, track from Moulin Rouge. And it's better than any version that I had ever heard. Prior to that, Nat King Cole had my favorite version. This is just frightening. It's so good. And nobody even knew he did it. You know, he's one of those guys, somebody must have been working on the orchestration in LA, flies in, does it for two hours, and doesn't think anything about it, you know. He was always good in the studio. We'd be working two, three weeks on these tracks, and he'd come in one afternoon and say record, and he'd do one track, perfect first shot, and then he'd walk out and come back another day, we'd do another track. So it was one of those kind of natural talents. So that was for him. It was written by a great composer who had one hit, which was Nature Boy. His name was Eben Abbas. He was a hippie in the 60s. People would see him walking through Central Park with no shoes and just, he sort of drifted off into the wind. He transitioned too, everyone's transitioning. <laughs> so, um, we're gonna play, uh, what do you feel like playing? What do you feel like? Yeah. This song we're gonna uh, do for Sammy's mom, Barbara. <laughs> she likes this song. I've never played it, but I guess I could read it. I can't read my own. <laughs> when I started playing with the rock bands, I lost my ability to read, but it looks like this. <laughs> I scratched it out. I was the only one when I joined those bands that could read, and they thought I was so weird taking out my music books, but um, it paid out along the way, you know. Anyway, this is a beautiful song that Eric Clapton wrote.
beautiful song. Dave Brubeck uh, was my first jazz influence, and in 1960, when I turned 15, I heard Blue Rondo a la Turk on his album. That was just a tremendous breakthrough in how you could use the creative process and do more than only classical music. And he had a lot of classical training, and that's what I was doing up until then. And I heard all this improv, but I heard also classical kinds of notes. And um, I think we worked on this, right? We worked on this, one of the first songs. <laughs> it's, uh, I don't know how old Sammy was then. How old were you then? She was, when, when, when I learned the song, how old were you? Minus 40, 50? <laughs> anyway, uh, this is the Blue Rondal the Turk will play for you.
ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Samantha Shapiro <laughs> and Mike Garson. Mike. Thank you so much. Can you tolerate one or two more? We have nowhere to go. <laughs> um, I wrote a lullaby for my daughters back in the 90s, and this song has become almost global in a way, and it's for all daughters and around the world, because how many people here have daughters? Right. How many are daughters? <laughs> so we got it all covered. So this is the lullaby. Sam, you want to join me on this?
Bobo. wants me to play on Thank you. Delette has asked me to play a good hour, so I will continue playing for you. I'm, I saw some old friends here who would be playing in a little while for you, and I asked if uh, Chris and Kevin would sit in with me on a tune. Are you guys around? There they are. I thought we'd do a little trio tune. No sound check. Somehow the piano is here and the drums are there. No promises sonically, but we'll see. These are great, great musicians. Thank you. 
Holy smokes, Mike, that was fantastic. I can't even brush my teeth. You guys are laying it down. The guys from Tom Scott, Mike, and the up and coming Samantha Shapiro. Let's hear it one more time, Mike. So one of my favorite composers when I grew up in Brooklyn was George Gershwin. So I'd like to close with a medley of every song he ever wrote. We'll make our reservations tonight at the hotel.
Oh my! Outstanding. Maestro. Outstanding. Outstanding. Mike, that was incredible. The great Mike Garson, ladies and gentlemen, along with the guys from Tom Scott Band. I don't know their names, but thank you. And, of course, Sammy Shapiro. Sammy, could you stand up and take a bow as well? The up-and-coming. I mean, that was kind of an I-was-there moment, right? I mean, I can barely walk out the door in the morning, and, and this is happening. The talent is unbelievable. And with all the white noise that's out there, you know, in the real world in the last year, it is something else to listen to something so beautiful as what just happened there. I mean, you got to admit, that kind of took your mind off of everything that's happening around the world. So anyways, uh, there's a few people I left out, and I want to make sure I acknowledge them here at the 5th Annual Raise the Roof Jazz Festival. Uh, Richard Sherman is here, the Calabasas Park Homeowners Association. Richard, are you here? Please, wave. Past CEO and Chamber President Carol Washburn. How could I leave her out? She's here. <laughs> Alicia Weintraub, is she here? Council member? Yes, Alicia. And hey, a little shout out for our chamber that I belong to, Calabasas Chamber, Pam Kissel, the membership director, and Chelsea Jordan is here as well. <laughs> I'd like to uh, spotlight some of the uh, sponsors. I'm going to do that, Lee. Uh, I'd like to spotlight some of the sponsors that we have today and give them thanks. Brenda Johnson, Calabasas Pharmacy. Brenda, where are you? There she is right back there. <laughs> Law offices of David Shapiro. <laughs> Many Atias is here with Keller Williams. Many. Please stand up. Wave. Stand up. Let them see you. There you go. And also there's one more. Lovey's. I think Lovey's Delicatessen is here. Is Lovey's here? Lovey's, delicatessen, we all know Lovey's. And thanks to those key sponsors here today at the uh, Raise the Roof Festival. These are, these are wonderful people, um, and they've contributed to, again, Loving Home Foundation. So we're going to play a little, uh, a little thing on the Loving Home Hospice. I believe it's called Clouds. Clouds, it's the, uh, the portion of the event right before the live auction. So... Let me know, Lee, when you're ready. Ready? Okay. Let's show the uh, video. I fell down, down, down to this dark and lonely hole. There was no one there. About me anymore, and I needed a way to climb and grab a hold of the edge. You were sitting there holding a rope, and we'll go up, 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 but I'll fly a little higher. Go up in the clouds because the view's a little nicer up here. My dear, it won't be long now. Now, when we get back on land, well, I'll never get my chance. Be ready to live, and it'll be ripped right out my hands. And maybe someday we'll take a little ride, go up, 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 and everything will be just fine. We'll go up, 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 but I'll fly a little higher. Go up in the clouds because the view's a little nicer up here, my dear. It won't be long now. It won't be long now. If only I had a little bit more time. If only I had a little bit more time. Right, and maybe someday I'll see you again. We'll float up in the clouds and we'll never see the end. We'll go up, 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 but I'll fly a little higher. Go up in the clouds because the view 
is a little nicer up here, my dear. It won't be long now. It won't be long now. Thank you, Lee. Thank you very much. Just before I get to David Shapiro, I, I kind of want to acknowledge David and Barbara. Barbara, would you stand? You're the parents of Sammy Shapiro. You should have a little wave, too. I mean, how did you do that? I, I, I'm not quite sure. Ladies and gentlemen, David Shapiro, one of the board members. Thank you. Thank you very much. How about a big hand for Steve Brevadoro for all his great work today? And a huge round of applause for an amazing jazz pianist. I don't know how he came out of jazz and on to David Bowie, Nine Inch Nails, Smashing Pumpkins, and now doing Music Heals projects all over the world. Mike Garson, a big round of applause and thank you. And I take absolutely no credit, but thank you, Samantha Shapiro, for playing today. A fantastic, beautiful job. You just saw that video from Zach, the song that he wrote, he played, you heard him sing it. Uh, sadly, Zach is no longer with us. He didn't make it beyond another year beyond that song, but that song is his legacy. That song was very important that he wanted to spread the love, his music, love of music and passion, uh, and his love of loving home hospice for children. So again, the only thing I'm here to do today is thank you all for being here to support this tremendous cause, this very worthwhile cause, Loving Home Hospice for Children. Now, you do have cards. I, we, didn't, we talked about it as a board. We aren't going to do the paddles. We aren't going to ask for fundraising. We have a small silent auction coming up shortly. But each of you has an envelope with no designated numbers on it please ask you to take a look at it when you can, how you can, if you can, please uh, contribute to Loving Home Hospice for Children. Again, the words Loving Home Hospice for Children say it all. You don't need to hear long speeches. Just enjoy the day. Have a great time. And remember Zach's beautiful music. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to introduce the uh, gentleman with me today. It's a wonderful band. We have Quinn Johnson on piano. Chris Colangelo on bass. Kevin Lenard on drums. And my dear friend for 40 plus 50, how many years? Something like that. Many, many years. Uh, I first met him when he was playing the lead trumpet with Buddy Rich. And uh, he's one of the one of the stellar trumpet players of our time. And please say hello to Chuck Findlay.
supposed to be in here. Yeah. What's that? Stuffy and human. <laughs> What'd you call it? Except for that. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Okay, that was a tune written by Victor Feldman called The Chant. And this next one is uh, was composed by a very famous saxophone player named Stanley Tarantino. It is called Sugar. <coughs> Thank you. 
So this next tune is one that uh, I composed a few years ago. Um, once I got it down on paper and kind of listened back to it in my head, I thought, I think I'm channeling another saxophone player who was a dear friend and a great, uh, great player named Grover Washington Jr. You know, remember Mr. Matthew, Thomas Grover, and he was a dear friend of mine, and uh, we uh, we'd like to do this tune for you now. Um, Grover, hope you're listening. <laughs> and uh, it's called uh, Gotta Get Closer to You.
Anyway, that was Got Any Closer to You. Yeah. Once again, Chuck Finley on trumpet. <laughs> Bill Johnson on piano. <laughs> the lovely Chris Melangelo on bass. <laughs> and the incredibly precocious Kevin Lenard on drums. <laughs> Anyway, um, what are we going to do now? What's that? This is me. Oh, yeah, right. Okay, uh, this is a tune that, actually, the story of this, as I had a record on Pacific Jazz. Now, those of you who are my age might remember the Pacific Jazz record label. This is when we bought those big flat things, you know, that you put on a record player. <laughs> Anybody remember that? Raise your hand if you remember you had a record label. Oh, good. Oh, good. I'm not, I'm not entirely alone in this room. It's comforting. But in any case, um, this was a Pacific Jazz record, and it featured a, a, a kind of, I think Kansas City originally, but lived in LA for a while. He had a trumpet player, Carmel Jones, is that right, was he around here? And he played with the big Gerald Wilson big band. And uh, Gerald wrote this tune for him, which was this title tune from this album, which kind of faded into obscurity, but I remembered it. So about a year ago, I pulled it out and uh, pulled my brain out and uh, managed to uh, notate the thing and, and make a little chart of it. And this is the Gerald Wilson tune called Business Meetin'. That's meetin' with an apostrophe, uh, no G. Business Meetin'. Here we go.
Just a little quick band aid, you can forgive me. We're back now. Uh, this song actually uh, it has very special meaning to me. It was written by the great French com film composer and uh, songwriter named Michel Legrand. Um, I first started uh, playing on recording sessions for films and television and records and so on around 1967. God, that was a long time ago. <laughs> was that 40 or 50? 40, 50? 49, oh God. Anyway. <laughs> I'm aging as I'm standing here. <laughs> anyway, um, right, so, uh, so one of the very first uh, film uh, movie scores that I got to play on was this movie composed by Michelle Legrand, a movie called The Thomas Crown Affair with Steve McQueen oh. and Faith you were, ah, you remember, and Faith Evelyn. And the title tune was a thing called Windmills of Your Mind. A very nice tune, great, fine, let's see. But throughout the movie, there was this other tune which basically was based on a scene in the movie that uh, had a chess game between Faye Dunaway and uh, Steve McQueen, and it was just, they're just, they were just shot like here. Her here, and then him, you know, just the eyes. So, fittingly enough, this tune, which I think is just a beauty, is called His Eyes, Her Eyes.
This is a tune that, uh, gosh, this, has, this tune hasn't come out of my book in probably, how long did we, 50, uh, 30 of five of those 50 years probably. This started out as a country tune, but one of the few tunes that adopts itself really well as a kind of an R&B song. Um, for those of you who are, who are around during 1967 and 68, you'll probably recognize it. It was something like this.
David Shapiro at this time for the final words.
Thank you very much. Again, thanks to everybody being here. Thank you again to Tom Scott and the Loving Home Hospice Band. <laughs> Loving Home Hospice for Children. Thank you, each and every one of you. A big round of applause to Mike Larson. And someone who I have nothing to do with their ability, Sam Shapiro. And how about a big round of applause for the person who puts us all together and puts her love into this every single day, Delette Davis. <laughs> there are, for those who are Mike Garson, David Bowie, uh, jazz fans, there is a table outside with some books, some CDs. I believe Tom Scott's going to have the same out there. Uh, opportunity to meet and greet. Uh, these great artists comes up later uh, at uh, 5 o'clock, I believe, right outside. So thank you very much. Again, Loving Home Hospice for Children. You each have envelopes. I appreciate everything, and we appreciate on behalf of the board, everything you can do to help this great worthwhile cause. The goal is to get 30 beds for 30 children that is so needed. Thank you very much.